I really want to tell you is change, but you have the background now. Yes? Agree? So I want to switch gear and I don't want to talk about me, but I want to talk about something in my head. And I've been saying this to my whole office for the past 15 years. The young ones get it, the old ones get it, but the young ones adopt it, the old ones are still a bit slow. Okay? Now you go figure out whether you understand this at the end and we'll talk about it, okay? Because it's necessary. You see, this one you hear before that the only thing that don't change is change, right? So this one you know, huh? If you read enough book, you understand. But more important is, nobody likes change. You see, that's actually the difficult part. It's like saying, you know, I want to make money. Yeah, who don't want to make money? But it's damn difficult to make money. Change is important. Everybody knows there's change, but nobody likes to change. So I explained to all my employees, and I'll share it with you, that if I move the office from Tuas over to Changi, half of the office will resign. It's not because the work was no good, it's because it's a change in how to go to work. That alone is difficult. Okay? No one really likes change. But we all know we change. So there it in lies a problem. Okay? This is a good book. Have anyone read? Uh, who has read the book? Okay, you don't count. Can you raise your hand? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, this book, if you haven't read, please go and read. It takes one lunch and we're in the library, so I'm sure the library has a copy. Yes? Yes? So go and read this book. It is about 50 pages and the font printed very big one, very fast. You have one sandwich, you just flip, 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 flip. It's a cartoon illustrated book about two mouse. I'll tell you the story and you, you have a takeaway if you've not read the book. Okay, but go and read it because like, I'm not a good storyteller. So two mouse, A and B, and they're good friends and every day they go out looking for cheese to eat. Hungry. One day, they found a really big cheese. So they were very happy. They said, wow, now I've got this cheese. Huh? Mian cui liao. Set, sweet, sweet. You understand? Sorry, he can translate. And then the two mouse, enjoyed the cheese for about a week and the mouse B got up, took his backpack and he said, I'm going to go look for more, more cheese. Mouse A said, what for? What for? We have all the cheese here. All the cheese we have. B said, no lah, I want to go look for more. So mouse A said to B, says, okay lah, go, enjoy. I have more cheese to myself, right? Okay, so mouse B goes. Let me ask you a question. Who survives? Mouse A or mouse B? B. Okay. Why? Because B continues to hone his skills. B continues to adapt and adopt change. B continues to hunt for cheese. B knows how to survive. A basically eventually ate the cheese, never go out, exercise, forgot how to search for cheese, sat there and became fat. In English, we call it complacency. Okay? And I hate to say to my friends, I think Singapore is in a state of complacency. I hate to say it. I'm born of this soil and I'm telling all my friends, we better wake up. Okay? That's why I think today this topic is quite interesting for you, I think. But go read the book. The most important thing I want to share with you is not the change, it's the only thing that doesn't change, or the only thing that doesn't change is change. It's this one. Is if you know that change is going to happen, then you better know that you better change faster than how the world is changing, right? Because if you change any slower than the way the world is changing, then you're a bit bopake lah. Obsolete, right? So you better go and change fast. And I'm telling you, I hate to tell you that the world is changing so fast. It is shocking. Okay? I, it's like asking taxi drivers what they think of Uber, you know? It just came like one tsunami within one month, you know. Everybody can curse and swear, lah, but that's called new economy. Lah. Okay, we can talk about how fast the world changed. Okay, switch gear completely. Now, I want to show you on the screen right now an orange square. Does anybody agree with me that that's an orange square? Anybody that agrees? Orange square. How many would agree? One, two, three. Okay. I now put on the screen an orange circle. Who agrees with me? That's an orange circle. The same three? Okay. Let me, let me tell you 
uh, a thought and you process, okay? For the other, I don't know how many of you here, but let's assume there's 100 of you, the other 97 of you, okay? Don't be shocked because there's another way of looking at it and I'm about to share with you is that if you put the square and you put the circle together, effectively, you get a cylinder. So, what I'm trying to say is this. When you looked at it from the front, you saw square. I was looking at it from the top down and I saw circle. When you look from the top down, I look from the side. Can you see? This is the fundamentals of why the whole world disagrees on the same thing. Can you understand me now? That's why couples fight. That's why children and parents fight. You all want the same thing, but you see it different. Okay? Now, in English, there's a word for that. That's called perspective. So, depend on how, the people say, depend on how you see her, right? Ah, okay, that English expression is called perspective. I'm not teaching you anything new. I'm just framing it for you because now I'm going to teach you something new. I'm going to tell you something that's quite important. That while you can see it different from how I see it or how this young man sees it, we all see it different. But there's one Kung Fu more powerful than perspective and that's called awareness. Okay? Uh, I need audio. Go ahead. Okay, guys, I am going to do this. And if those of you have seen this video, hey, don't fall asleep. Huh? It's only eight seconds. So it's a very fast video. In this video, you're going to see two, a group of friends, some wearing white t-shirt, some wearing black t-shirt. And they're playing basketball. The white one would throw the white ball to the white and the black one would throw the black to the black. Now, if you've seen this video, bear with me for the benefit of the other 90 that never seen this video. What I want you to do when watching this video for 8 seconds, in, quietly in your mind, count the number of times the white passes the ball to the white. Because huh? white will pass to the white, black will pass to the black. Just count the white ones, the t-shirt, white color, pass the ball. Okay? Go. This is an awareness test. Count. In your head. How many passes does the team in white make? Go! Okay. I just want to show hands. How many people counted... 11. 1. That's it? 2, 3, 4. How many people counted? 12. Oh, good. Okay. 3, 6, 7, 10, 13. Okay. How many people counted? 13. Okay, more of you. And how many counted 14 and more? Okay. I'm going to play this video again and I'm going to ask you a question before I play it. How many of you saw the orang utan? Okay, for those who saw the orang utan, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For the nine of you that saw the orang utan, have you seen this video before? Yes? Okay, so it's an exercise you must have done in another exercise. So, for the seven of you, shh. For the 93 of you, I'm going to play this video again. This time, what I want you to do is to look for the orang utan. Fair? And tell me whether you can see the orang utan, which is as big as this lady. Huh? It's, that's how big it is. And you didn't see it, okay? Now, I'm going to play it. Watch for it. And trust me, it's the same video. Okay? No different. Sound, sound, brother. No sound. Oh. Oh. Okay, watch for the orang utan. Huh? There. Do you see the orang utan? He's doing the moon Do You see it? Hey, what happened? Sound. Don't have. Don't have leh. You guys, did you guys see it? You all got it? Okay. So, this English word is called awareness. And I'm going to explain this a little bit to you because this is what's going to divide you from your future. Okay? It really is a dividing one, not perspective. When you are sad, and I'm sure you've been sad, have you realized when you turn on the radio, 
every song sings to you? Have you realized? And when you play the lyric, ah, one loud. Like suddenly all the songs make sense, you know? Have you realized? Because when you are sad, your awareness for sadness becomes very heightened. When a girl pactos a boyfriend for a few years and she quietly wants to get married and waiting for him to pop the question, suddenly got a lot of invitation one, no? Do you know what I mean? And you get really angry because you're getting all the wedding invitations. Not that there are more invitations yesterday than were today. It's just that you are more aware of wanting to get married. When a girl wants a red handbag, she walks down Orchard Road, she sees a lot of red handbag. You understand? Awareness. The power of awareness is shocking, I have to tell you, because most of the time, Everyone in this room sees a lot of things. We see the world change. We see it. And you see it from this way, I see it from that way. That's perspective. But not many people actually are aware of the danger of the change. You follow me? I'm going to use three companies and then I'm going to stop and see if you want me to go on, if I'm kind of losing you. Everybody know this company? Okay. The younger ones may not but I take it that you all know. Quick question, what kind of company is this? Anyone? For photography, who else? What else? Say, say, camera, okay. One more? Just one more, guys, come on. Eh? Data. Say that again? Oh, 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 okay, guys. Let me tell you what it is. It's a chemical company. It's not a camera company. It's not a photography company. It's a chemical company. So how does it work? This piece of paper that comes out, this one, has a gel pack that's hidden in the paper. For those of you who've ever played it, um, when you hit the paper, it exposes light to the paper, which is protected. The paper comes out of the camera, and as it comes out, there's a piece, two pizza rollers, that squeeze a little gel pack at the front of the paper and it spreads a chemical inside the paper between a layer. This chemical then reacts with the chemical on the paper already that has reacted with the light to create an image. Do you understand? It's a chemical company. Someone recognized that by putting two chemicals together, they can create color. What's interesting is this. Read that first line. Polaroid went from ubiquity to obsolescence. Ubiquity means Uber, you know, bigger than life. Not the taxi, but you know, bigger than life. But, and it's gone. Article will say, in the 60s and 70s, Polaroid was a monopoly in the instant photography market. The basis of the camera is a chemical process. Huh? During the mid-60s, very important, read this line, Polaroid took out the first patents on electronic shutters. So who invented the electronic shutter? Polaroid. I want you to think, huh? All through the 90s, Polaroid executives continued to believe paper print is important. It's amazing, but people today don't want print anymore. Hugh McKenzie, the Polaroid executive, said that resisted the whole idea of making money on hardware. They, they're a chemical company. They want to sell you the paper and the chemistry. You see, you use your iPhone and your Samsung to take photos, there's no paper, I know. There's no uh, re replaceables, right? Can't make money that way. But the only way that Polaroid can make money is that way. So to tell them that digital camera and electronic shutter is the future, is see the you understand? You understand? Because the CEO is a chemist. Uh, he, he, if you tell him, hey, don't need chemistry, hey, he's out of a job, right? Can you understand the problem? So Polaroid refused to change, you understand? So what happened to Polaroid, you know? It's bankrupted. Lah, huh? Know this company? 
Uh, I think we all know this company. I'm going to tell you something, but this company is going to shock you. Do you think this company is still around? No, okay? It's gone. Why do you think it's gone? Can someone tell me? Why do you think Kodak, the film company, is gone? Technology replaced it, yes? The digital world replaced it, yes? The electronic camera replaced it, yes? So, Kodak, no chance, ah. Agree? Let me tell you this. You know who invented the digital camera? Kodak. Think about it, huh? The thing that killed them is what they invented, huh? In 1975, the inventor, Stephen Sassoon, and you can Google him now, he's now giving the Scientific America Award for the invention of the decade. This was given by Obama just three years ago. In 1975, he invented CCD. CCD is the electronic sensor that converts color and image into ones and zeros. Kodak bloody invented it and did not know what to do with it so badly that it killed them. Do you understand? These people didn't see the orang utan, you understand? They were counting basketballs being passed. They were counting it so close that the monkey is bigger than life also you cannot see, you know. You understand the problem in business and the world? We think we see it. This is the guy, by the way, Stephen Sassoon. There's a great article. His boss made him hide it. This went on in Kodak. Okay, so I, I'll fly through it. I, I won't talk too much about Kodak anymore. But I want to talk to you about, and of course, this is Kodak shares. It's completely gone now. I'm going to tell you another company just for the laugh. My last company, I promise you, okay? Ready for this company? You know or not, this company? Ah, well done. <laughs> very good. I'm coming. You're very good. I'm going to ask one question. How old is this Nokia company? Let's see this room. This is a library. How old is Nokia? 30 years? Any takers? 30. I'll give you 30. Any takers? Yes? Anybody say it's older than 30? Raise your hand. How old? Try. 100 plus 100? About there? Are you guys ready for this? It's much older than 100 years. Now, but Nokia, of course, 100 years ago got no hello. Don't have a. So, what was his business back then? Hey? Tire, no. Huh? Well done. So, the word Nokia is the name of a river in Finland. So, in the old days, you chop the tree, you got no truck, la, brother. You roll it down to the river, and you roll it down the river, and then you collect it downstream. Understand? No? Lumbering, lumbering. Singapore don't have one, but Ang Mo country, Okay? This river, this picture, is River Nokia. So the family was a lumbering company called Nokia. Okay, Nokia not a phone company, it's a so chai company. Okay, the company is formed in 1865. Hello, hello, today is what year, okay? 1865. Okay, and then these are the two founders. This is the first mobile phone ever invented. Okay, so far so good. Now, this phone. I don't know all the boys in this room. Uh. You all remember this phone? You call it banana phone. Uh. But the code name was Nokia 7110. Do you all know why it's so popular? Why is it so popular? Besides stylo. Uh, yeah. It's crowd. Uh. Hey, participate. Recognize now. Did you watch this movie? Yeah? He said, I need an exit, beam me up, give me a phone. Then he run, 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 and then drop la, fly la, everything. It's this phone, okay? <laughs> this is the phone. What year was that phone, that movie, excuse me? What year was that movie? Anybody, roughly? 1998. One more try, come. You see this price of Nokia? See you know, you draw this line down, it's 1999-2000. Do 
that movie Matrix was launched that year. You see the power of marketing. Everybody also want a banana phone. But my, what I want to share with you is actually is the next part, okay? Because this is where it is. Here's my question. If this is where the market peaks on Nokia's share value, how come it peaked for one day and then start tumbling down? What happened? Ah? You mean people forgot about Matrix straight away? Ah? Buy, 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 buy. Hey, don't buy, don't buy, don't buy. Then fast. What happened? Competition. What kind of competition, my friend? I'm going to tell you now. You know this phone? Sony Ericsson. Sony brought his Walkman power. In those days, we all walked with little handbag purse like that with music. That was Stylo days. That's right. And <laughs> so Walkman carried that to combine with Ericsson yeah, and made these phones. That was the first phone that brought what we call convergence for more than one product coming together. And they also put Sony's camera. So that was the beginning of the end. Okay? And when that product come out, it dived. I put this picture up here. Do you know what that is? I'm going to shock you. In those days, there was a phone by Motorola called Microtech. Flip, 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 flip. One, uh. I don't know if you know, uh, but it's a flip phone. Uh. I know that we call it flip phone. Uh. It was micro, Motorola is Angmol, uh, American, uh, huh? Motorola. Uh. You know who is this? Who love to copy? Samsung. Okay. This is the first Samsung. So Samsung went to copy the Motorola. And the only difference they did is they put a clock in the front. So when you close the clamp, the, you can just look at the clock. People say, Whoa, me and Kui Kwan si kan ne. And that is Samsung's foray into the mobile phone market. Now, of course, today they're copying everything else. Lah, huh? But anyways, huh? do copy and do. Lah. Now, you see Nokia suddenly in 2006 have a little share going up. Small one. What happened? What did Nokia suddenly do that got it right? Because for many years they do, eh? This is 2001 to 2008. That's about seven years. Ah. They do and do and do and do and do and nothing happened. Ah. And suddenly it got one more peak. What happened? Anybody? Windows. What phone? Windows. Windows. No. To be exact, Symbian. So they invented this series called the N series. Now they introduce keyboard. Okay, it's still a convergent, but now got keyboard. And everyone said, whoa. Okay? And everybody tried to copy, and this was the era of also Blackberry, lah. the keyboard generation. Lah. And you see, come up to here, watch, out, look, 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 see this line, come down, it's 2007, 2008. Agree? You see, Nokia price drop, 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 Smartphone, brother. The more precise answer is one company called Apple. La. And look at the date. Nah. I want you to look at the date, okay? Ladies and gentlemen. Apple released the date on what day? 2007 June. Nah. June, more. June, no. If you don't know where Apple is, you just look at Nokia share, you can always remember. Nah. The day you tweet and tweet and tweet and tweet is the day Apple come out. Okay? You follow the problem. So, I want to end it on this note for here to tell you this. There's a lot of monkeys around in your life, okay? That's the truth. We choose not to see it, though. We see it, but we just don't see the monkey. You understand? Now you know what I'm talking about. We see. We count everything else but the monkeys in our lives. If you can understand that, then go and grab hold of that monkey and then you'll be ahead of the game. You've got to see it. I can't help you, but if you don't see where the monkey is, you won't catch it. But you're not blind. So you need to get out of your comfort zone to see it. You really. Because sit there, who do not count bas basketball passing? Count now, one, two, three, wait, 13, eh, 14. Eh. Everybody can count now, okay? We're not stupid. But not everybody can see the monkey, you know? 
even though they see it. Nah. I don't know if I'm losing you. But everyone wants to know what makes the distinction between this and that is that answer. If you can see the monkey in whatever you're doing, you will win. I promise. Okay? Now let me see what else I have. I got a lot of rubbish. Lah. I really have a lot of rubbish. I see what else rubbish. I wanted to see what you want to see. Uh, yeah, never mind. Lah. So I, I can take the sharing with you. How much time do I have left? Five minutes? No. No? More? Yeah. How much more do you guys want? I don't know. Okay, you, you stop me whenever you want to go home, okay? I have, I have two things I can move forward and share with you further to that. One is since you want to understand Ong and Ong and, and what I saw, right? The monkey. Maybe what I saw as a monkey, I can share that with you and tell you why I think the way practices are must evolve. It's just like why uh, the digital camera will replace Kodak. You know what I'm saying? Uh, where I think it's going. What I think. I can do that. Or I can talk to you about the about the meaning of your life and, and the meaning of mine. Which one do you guys want? You want the business one or you want both? One both, okay. So let me, I, we see how much time we have, okay? Okay? Okay, I want to talk about one company. And I want to try to explain this one company to you. I want to show you evolution story. You all know this company? Okay? Okay, some people call it Porsche, some people call it Porsche, but it's the same thing. Now this company, you would say, is a car company, yes? But I want to tell you something about a car. A car is not made up, there's no such thing as a car designer, you know that. Nobody wakes up and says, I'm going to learn to design a car. I'll explain to you why. These are the parts of a car. So let me start from a little bit, huh? I won't do all. This is an engine, agree? The person that can design that is called a mechanical engineer. Correct or not? Got fire, got air, combustion. This is what we call the chassis. This is structural engineer. So that the car cannot twist and turn when you drive hard. Huh? This is airbag. So we call it safety engineering if you must. This is a Bluetooth, radio, electronic engineer. You can talk about the chair, you got ergonomic engineer. You talk about the showroom, this is architecture, this is interior. So actually to put one car out, require actually quite a lot of people, right? And they all do different things. So to believe that an engineer called a mechanical engineer designed the Porsche is wrong. Huh? Because he alone, he designed the engine. Uh. And the thing that the guy who designed the frame, the shape and all that is actually the car make also wrong because uh, the car cannot move without the mechanical engineer. Uh. And if the car can move and it looks good but it got no aircon, no GPS, no stereo, no this, no that, I think you should run a car. Uh. The future is this. I want to tell you this now. Nobody wants your service. I hate to be honest. The era of service is over. Over. The era of moving forward is only two things. You either sell a product or you sell a solution. Don't do service. Okay? If you just want to give service, I tell you, it's either cheaper, faster, better. You understand? It's a service. If I'm going to carry a box from A to B, you are going to carry a box from A to B and he's the customer, he goes, how much? Ah? Agree? It's a service. Who can do it cheaper? Who can do it faster? Who can do it better? You understand service? Where you give product and solution, nobody's asking for cheap, no. Nobody's asking for fast, no. I need a good product. That's all. What, what fast product? No such thing as fast product. So you need to rethink how you believe, behave in this world that you are looking at products and solutions not service. And I want to tell you, if anybody ever catch out you and say, cheap, fast, better, I tell my clients, all three I can do. I can do cheap, I can do fast, I can do better. 
but I can only do two things at one time. I cannot do all three. You want cheap and fast, may not be better. You want fast and better, may not be cheap. You want better and cheap, not fast. You understand? So we can do cheaper, faster, better, but two or three I can offer you. Uh, sure can, uh, but can't offer you all three. Uh. But if you go down that way of doing business, it will eventually come to quite a meat market. Uh. Okay? The answer is in products and solution. But Porsche didn't stop there. Porsche went on further and said, actually the car is a lifestyle. To some, it's a transport. But you see, if you position your product as a transport, then there are many cars. Right? And if your purpose of a transport is to take you from point A to point B, then Suzuki also can. Right now, Daihatsu also can. So why must buy Porsche? You say brand. I've got a lot of brand for you. Lah. Right? Because the brand promises you a solution, a product first of all, and a solution to your lifestyle. So if you look at the company, not only the architecture and interior, wow, he said you go driving can't be naked, right? So give you clothing to wear. Lah. Your car, you driving need to wear shoes, give you shoes. Wow, got jit, tayang jit tao, ah. wow, sunglasses. Lah. Everything he think of. Ah. So Porsche has begun to understand that what they're not selling you is just, just the product, but a solution to a lifestyle. And once you get hooked on the lifestyle, you actually don't mind wearing the t-shirt with the badge, Porsche. Ah, oh, you know, nowadays people like oh, Ferrari, one sign here. In the old days, you, you put your company name, see how many stuff on the way. <laughs> you don't believe me? You put out like, NUS. You see, I think you don't go out. Uh. You won't go out, uh. you just watch. What, what, what NUS t-shirt and go to bar? Hello? <laughs> don't have one, ah? Uh. Sure one, okay? The boy is true not, ah? Uh. It's like something wrong, ah? Uh. You put on, you, you put on, at least you see one big, big one, ah? Uh. Ferrari, wow, oh, howdy and ah? Uh. And U.S. <laughs> okay, so you have to understand what people are selling. And only when you understand that do you know how to position what you're doing. Okay? One more. Porsche, while it made all the change, did one thing consistently. So it's, it's like I tell all my Singapore friends in doing business. Singapore got a single Singapore ping pai, right? You know what's a Singapore ping pai? Honest, we are clean, not corrupted, we're a good manager, we're very systematic. You know, Singapore got a, I call it squeaky clean image. Ah. So if you want to hire, you are all happy to hire Singaporeans. Ah. That's our ping pie. Lah. Porsche also got certain ping pie. Lah. So I want to show you the very first Porsche car that was ever designed called the 356. This is the first Porsche. Cute, huh? I think it looked like a frog la, la, or toad, la, the, the headlight. But I want to show you the entire range of Porsche today. Okay? Today. I want you to look at this car, get an image. Now look at this range. Same, no? It's just better. There's a certain DNA that Porsche has maintained. They have never changed it. You want, I can do the same picture with Ferrari. La. There's a certain brand promise that will never change. And you should not change it. Because if you keep changing today, hey, do, do, laksa is si out. Last week you tell me you're the best laksa, this week you tell me you're the best kwetiao. Very confusing. So when you sell products and solution, first understand what the solution's offering and how to be consistent in your brand promise for your product. Does that all make sense? These two things? So all we had done at Ong and Ong, to be very honest, is I recognize that if I just want to be your architect, I'm providing you a service. Everybody can calculate GFA plot ratio, how many story, how many set. Everybody can. Then you end up being cheaper, faster, better. You go down that way. The only way for us to break out of this mold, looking forward in the new economy, is what we tell everybody, actually, we are not just an architect, but when I design you the building, I'm designing the landscape around it, the lighting around it, the interior, the, the branding, environmental branding, how we plan it, the experience. It's a whole study. 
made up of all different schools, these all different degree right, no? and from there we do all that then we offer the same thing we said we also do the aircon, the lighting the internet, the connection we also do project management, construction management, development management, place management we are providing a solution you understand? You see the word design solution, the 360 solution. So the magazine or the newspaper you have is really about what we're trying to do as a company. And that's how we were able to move from that 60 employees to 1,000 employees. Because we are basically trying to redefine the landscape. I don't, I, the best way, the best way to predict the future is to create the future. You understand? That is the best way. You can try and guess what tomorrow is going to happen. But your best way to do it is to create it yourself. And then keep selling it and selling it until everybody... It's like iPhone, right? he created the iPhone, now everybody's trying to copy the iPhone. Now everyone's waiting for the big next, next big creation. You all follow? Okay. Maybe what I can do is I pause and then we talk about life. <laughs> talk more about architecture is not interesting. Lah. All my buildings are damn nice. Lah, okay? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Not interesting, because there's plenty of good architecture in Singapore, and I'm a very proud Singapore Rian, and I like to promote Singapore architecture. It doesn't have to be mine. I think we're a damn good nation. Okay? But I'm just saying how the business will survive in the next, next era. I think just doing architecture alone is going to be difficult. That's all I'm saying. But I've led up to why I see it, and I think that is the monkey. You understand what I'm saying? Okay? And that's how we position it. Any questions? Cannot be 100 people in here, nobody got questions. Eh? No? Sure not. I'm so clear. Yes, please. Yes, thank you. Zipun, uh, was it the competition in the uh, architectural landscape that make you see the monkey? Ah, no. So if you remember, in my earlier slide about the company's history timeline. What happened is I said SARS, 9-11, dot-com bubble burst. So let me try to explain it and you understand it. I have to tell you this, guys. It's never the success story that's important to me and to you. Don't. The better question is, what were the struggles? Okay? Because the success is just the outcome of the struggle. So if you're trying to understand the success, you'll never make it. Because it's a, it's, a, it's a byproduct. It's like saying, I like the chicken rice, I want to make chicken rice. But the answer is in the ingredient, you understand? It's the liao. So success is the same thing. Success is just the end result. If you struggled well, you get success. You don't struggle well, you don't get success. Fair? So the better question is, what were your struggles? And what do you see in that struggle to create an opportunity for the success? So don't celebrate the success. No one should celebrate success. Singapore is only successful together because we struggled, you understand? And the problem that I see is Singapore is not going to struggle a lot more. That's why I think there's going to be a very, very slim chance of success moving forward because nobody needs to struggle anymore. Okay? You can call it whatever. You can call it comfort. We are spoiled. We are entitled. There are many words that describe Singaporeans today. Okay? Many words. Of course, we all say one people, one nation, one Singapore. We sing the song. La. But when it really comes to it, we're not quite coordinated, you know. We're not the Japanese. And I'll talk about the struggle, but we're not Japanese. I tell people this, hear me. The Japanese come to Singapore, Chokang. He come here, he buy Japanese car, one, no? And then he hang out with all his Japanese friends, one, no? Then they go and open one Japanese restaurant, one Japanese karaoke, they go and ja open up, eh? Then every country they go, they create one thing called Japan Town. Then they teach the Angmo and you how to eat their sushi. So much so that you go to Japan and say, oh, I like, I like, I like. You understand? I tell you now, the Japanese, Korean, and China, by the way, in my opinion, they are a creature called ducks. Why duck? Because when ducks fly south in winter, they fly in formation. Have you seen? They fly in triangle, they in the sky. You take a gun and you shoot one duck down, they will scatter first for safety. But little bit down, 
they reform again into another triangle and they carry on. No. Ducks. Japanese are ducks. Koreans are ducks. I believe Chinese are also quite duck. But I tell you who is not a duck. Ah. I hate to say it. Singaporeans are, you're not ducks. Lah. You're chickens. Ah. <laughs> then people ask me, why chicken? I'll tell you now why chicken. Have you ever been to a chicken farm? I grew up near a chicken farm. All the chicken like that, like that, like that, everywhere. Right? No? Have you ever seen chicken walk in formation? <laughs> Never, okay? There's no such thing. They're all very good chicken. They can all taste very good. They can all pack. They can go cock okay? They can do all, okay? But they can't do it in formation. Chickens. Japanese are ducks. We are chickens. And I said, damn it, we guys better learn how to be ducks. If Singapore is to succeed tomorrow, we better learn to be ducks. Stop being so divisive. Learn to fight as one. Small leh. But yet we all, I, I don't know how to say lah. Huh? Very kiksima. And I tell you, we don't know how to hunt in packs. You understand? Hunting in packs. When we all go out to do business together. Singaporean, I, I go to Vietnam, I do business, I see another Singaporean firm. I say, wow, hey, very happy quantity do there. He's my competitor. But to be honest, I'm quite happy to have him there. Why? If he win or I win, Singapore win. And if he bring the money back to pay his staff or I bring the money back, that is injection into the Singapore economy. If you study economics, you recognize it really doesn't matter which Singaporean wins so long as Singapore wins, right? So I'd rather give my brother a support, hop chop together, hey, you do landscape, hey, let's go. Leh. I got this low bang, we're going together. Don't worry about money. We talk money later. We grab the job first, then we kind of figure out how to solve the problem. That's fighting in duck formation. You understand? But the sad part is Singaporeans aren't like that. You know what Singaporeans do? When I meet, first thing they ask me, hey, ooh, discount, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you the honest truth. It's really sad. Because the only thing we think about women, the xiao you jing shen, I tell you now, xiao you jing shen, is you know, I tell you now, if you and I do business, and we're going offshore, I bring you, I, we get the best price for each other. You understand? I don't need your discount. I don't want your discount. I want his discount. You understand? But Singapore only allowed to cut deal with Singaporeans, you know? Really? Cut kaki lang this si be gao leh. Cut yong kok le kwan le cut me deal ah. It's true, no? You think about it. We know how to cut each other deal. We are like lion. Oh, what si be gao. We are damn smart in the zoo ah. Outside is not the zoo. La. It's a real jungle. I asked my staff in my office. I said, we have 13 offices, we have posting. Who wants to go to our Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia office? Wow, bolang kichu. Everybody keep quiet. No? Then I said, who wants to go to our New York office? Everybody kichu, no? You see the problem in Singapore yet? Can you see it? We are too, too comfortable. And we continue to believe that we are so damn good. I, I don't know how to tell you. I'm a true Singaporean. I'm son of the soil and I tell you, it's really sad to see the state of affairs. We all laugh about Malaysia, right? Wabumi Putra. You see the Malay, they treat the Chinese. Huh? We, yeah? But truth is, huh? You know the word Bumi Putra, you know what it means? Bumi is the sun, Erzi. Putra is the land. All the word Bumi Putra means is the sun of the land. And Singaporeans, I hate to say it publicly, is starting to become Bumi Putra. We know it's no good. You can see what's going on. But we are behaving like this. We're starting to say, what's the Xinjia Poland? I'm a pioneer citizen. What have you done for me? That's called Bumi Putra attitude. You understand? And it's a very dangerous place to go. We cross the road, the zebra crossing, I tell people, I say, you cross the road, zebra crossing, you, you drive, you stop. The fellow in front, you cross, I see how late one. Hey, zebra crossing, okay? My right. You know the Singapore attitude? Law for law, hey, zebra crossing, look, ting chia. Oh, hmm, I cross the road. This is what is happening. We don't cross the road at zebra crossing. I say, hey, thank you, thank you. We believe it's our right. We are a problem nation. And I think no one wants to say it. Lah. 
I've been saying it, and I don't know if it, I speak from my heart. Lah. We have a problem. Lah. And I think some of us understand where I'm coming from. Some may think I'm crazy, lah, okay? That's fine. Just my personal opinion. Lah. But I think if Singapore is going to have a tomorrow, we've got to learn to work together. And stop this attitude problem. Lah. Plenty of attitude problem. The struggle, my friend. Wait, wait. I haven't answered his question. No. I went one circle. No. But I'm coming back. Lah. The struggle was this. In 2003, to support 60 employees, we needed, I, I, I say like that, we need 3X three, three to support. 3X. Three so we need 3 projects to support 60 people. But the market was so bad at that time. Just one project, you're happy. Yeah. Don't talk about 3. So the question is, I struggled to figure out how can I put food on 60 employees' plate? when there's only one project available in the market. You understand the challenge, the struggle? So I went to Goreng Goreng, the client, I said, uh, I don't just do architecture, I also do ID. Eh. Dude, so ID man, I said, what the hell? Look, you're in here. Sell first, ma. Then he said, okay, okay, we try. I said, uh, wait, 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 I also do landscape. Zoom, I said, yeah, I can do. I said, try it, ah. So one project, I squeezed three eggs. You see or not? It was a struggle issue at that time. It wasn't some grand plan that I had, like, wow, 360, uh, boon, what's it? Those days, it was just survivor. You understand? Just survivor. We have to find three eggs, only one egg. It's not to do three eggs. 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 Then that's how we started 360. That's all. So then we just kept on drumming the drum until where we are today. La. That was a survivor. It was a struggle and survivor. Yes? So what is the cause of the problem you mentioned in Singapore? Wow. <laughs> you ready for that? I think there's two parts to it. La. I think it's two parts. Okay? One is I use the word Akong. La. Okay, you all know who Akong is, okay? Akong loves us too much. It's the truth. It's a safety net in Singapore. No one really has to suffer. Because he made sure. You call it public housing, you call it whatever it is. We have an unspoken safety net. Okay, number one. Because of that safety net, no one really fall yet, you understand? You see, failure or falling is part of life. If your children grow up and never fall, he can never pick himself up. It is like that. Of course, we hope don't fall and break a bone. Nah. But some falling is necessary. And because of this amazing safety net, well done, okay? I mean, all compliment. It is also the problem. And then when we grow up in a nation where there's an unspoken, uh, unspoken safety net, uh, everything don't work in Singapore, you blame the safety net, right, brother? Everything, you know? Everything is Chenghu. Everything. This problem of this nation is we expect and be entitled. We have been protected, that's all. It's like when your children... I mean, they're children amongst us, so I hear the knock children. It's like children get too spoiled by their parents. You understand? You see spoiled children, and you look at them, and you look at the parents, and you say, wow, well, how did they raise the children, man? Right? Spoil. Oh, yeah! You see before or not? How la, how la, ni china. And then they're very rude to their parents also. You see before or not? See before or not? Sim tiambo. You see these children treat their parents like that, pain, right? But the parents did everything to provide, right? Understand the problem now? It's that we did too good as being great parents, you understand? We have a fantastic safety net, i tell you first. You must go other country and see other country's safety net. Them chala went down there. So, Yes, yes. Yes. So, did you use the same thing to people or 
No, not the same 62. Yeah, we had to, we had to, we had to retire some, recruit new, and that was a that was a painful change. That was a very painful change. So, ah, so I'll I'll give you statistics of the 62 employees in 2003 to today. Today, today we're 1,050 some people. 1,000 every day, a little bit in and out, lah, huh? Today, four. Okay, in other words. 58 and change idea. Yeah. Now, the 58, I have to tell you, the principal change is not because they do not be architects. And this one's a painful one, okay? My mother, my late mother ran the practice, like most people run the practice, called Taoke. So when you say jump, everybody say, yes boss, how high? You agree? When I run the practice, I say, ni zuo to sao? You understand Chinese? Or not? I'm very scared. Means you do how hard? Oh. <laughs> how hard you work will relate to, lead to how much you how much we make. And how much we make will relate to how much I will sh you, share with you. You understand? So I go that way. I had to change. So why did the 40, 58 leave? Basically, the 58 wanted iron rice bowl. You understand? What good luck so gang? You understand the problem? I bargain for a job, I come for a job. I will do my job. But that's all. When we change to it is a whole new generation, right? People who want to make a difference, then say, wow, I want to work there. You understand? It was not architecture that changed the paradigm. It was the philosophy of the business that changed the paradigm. Got, your, got it? Any others? Yeah, how, how, sorry, how do you go about identifying the monkeys? Um, how do you actually make sure that your you company must, actually... You must clean the glasses a bit more, uh, sit there, stay a bit more. I don't know. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know. Because all of us have different monkeys. And, and, and I think the monkeys will appear in your life when the pain surfaces more. When the pain don't surface enough, you won't spend time to see. I have to tell you. And I, I told you we have a safety net. And because of that safety net, none of us are really in pain. Which is why you talk to, I don't know, how many people are employers here? Not you, line. <laughs> how many employers are employer? No, all employees? By and large, employers feel very big check. Because employees, today come, two days later disappear, right, no? Singaporeans. Do you know that? It's shocking. They apply for the job, they come, they work two, three days, they disappear. You call them and say, no, not for me. We, my point is we have a fantastic safety net in this nation. So no one really feels the pain, 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 pain. We don't have to take three jobs anymore like our founding parents and fathers. No more. Those days are gone. And in so far, we don't feel that. I don't know what you call it. Uh, hungry. Some people say got no fire in the belly. Uh, people, I don't know what's the right description. Uh, but I, I just do this, you understand me a bit. Uh, huh? If you don't feel this, you won't see the monkey. You feel it, you then chala chala, you will look for the monkey. Okay? okay? And everybody's a different monkey. Mine, yes, mine's a similar question. So it's like, you say you have to spot the orangutan, right? Sorry, yeah. say again again? Okay, like in the video, you say you have to spot the orangutan. Yes. But besides the orang, how, okay. So when we are focusing on something, we are aware of something, that you mean there are other things that we see but we don't see. But there are so many other things. How, how do we know that this is the, yeah, the correct orangutan, you know? Okay. There may be another big feature that we are also missing out besides this orangutan. Yeah. Our, our human mind is fantastic, okay? I have to tell you, if you don't, have you not studied psychology, 
when we look at you, look at me, actually our eyes is not fixed one, no? Our eyes is actually, we call it, anyways, you go and read your cycle, the eyes do this. I always come back to you more. Then when I switch focus, it goes like that, no? Our human eye. You do a psychology test, they have tested it. They measure the eye and they know that the human eye is actually looking at everything but it becomes focused on something, okay? We see things. The problem is our awareness is not heightened, you know. I want a So you see also you don't know what you're seeing, you see. Although your brain is seeing it, your eye is seeing it, but you just don't know it. You understand the problem? So yes, you're right. You will keep seeing everything. But I don't know what your monkeys are in life. You need to hurt first. Okay? No no hurt, no 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 power. I don't know how to explain to you. I I don't know, it's like exercise. Ah. You want shong shong shong? No exercise one. Ah. You wanna you wanna lose weight, you wanna be cut, you gotta suffer first. Ah. No pain, no gain. Ah. I don't know how to explain all this. Lah. I'm not being cliche, okay? I'm just saying we haven't gone to the bottom of our lives yet. And the day you feel that, you will rise. I'm not saying that everybody needs to go through it in life, okay? I'm just saying, if you look at all the success stories from Sam Gui la, to Robert Kwok, la, you can run down all the famous billionaire, millionaire in Asia. You know, Li Ka Sheng make money from doing what? Selling silk flower. Leh. Robert Kwok make money from what? Selling sugar cane. Leh. Sam Gui make money from what? Selling popia. Leh. So, to you, it's the impossible. How you sell popia until you become a billionaire? I don't know. I'll tell you. Lah. It's not what you do. It's not the profession you choose or the business you choose. It's how hungry you are to make it happen. No? You haven't... I, I tell you. Huh? I tell you. I sent a Singaporean to Vietnam to work. The whole day sit there and bargain with me. You know what? No? Salary. That's all. The only thing Singaporeans love to bargain with me is salary. How much you pay me? Very strange. Even I say, you pay how much, how much, how much. They still want to bargain you salary. Eh? Because they got minimum standard. <laughs> Singaporeans are that. And I hate to tell it to you, one Singapore architect say, fresh grad sa cheng poet da. If you work, maybe sunny, sunny, maybe lak cheng chit cheng la. Don't talk about zap ni wana, ha? Don't talk about the su hu la, ha? We just talk about the jiu xiang, pia jiang jiu xiang, liu xiang la, okay? One fellow like Cheng Kogo, Vietnam, one architect. You know how many architects I can hire in Singapore? Uh, in, how many in Vietnam we can hire? $200 for one architect. $6,000 I can hire 30 people, no? You tell me you want Singapore so kila can work, do 30 people work, ah? That's Singapore for you, ah? Singapore is just like that. Lo. I don't know how to explain. Lo. Road work. You ever see road work? Come on, you drive, you take bus, you look road work. You see one Bangra digging and two Singaporeans standing around. You never see before, man. See, it's a supervisor in Singapore. But the Singapore is not the one digging, you know. Digging is too dirty for you. But you're damn good at standing around. Ah. And then ask, what's my salary? Ah? You see a problem yet? I don't know how to change it, okay? I think it can't be changed in one day. I hate to say it, it's going to take a generation. We are the lost generation. The one sort of in between. And I think the sad part, okay, I talk about one thing, huh? Just we talk about life one. Huh? We all know we need to change, agree? Come on, I ask you all one question. Who disagree with me that 健康 is the Who? Who disagree? 钱比健康重要. Anybody disagree? Nobody disagree, right? But what do you do every day for your health? You want to exercise everybody? Who exercise every day? Yeah, yeah. so I run, I run 10 km every day. Okay? Every. My friends look at me and they say, Abun, I look at you, I'm tired already. <laughs> they don't have to exercise, they're tired already. 
I'm going to tell you a philosophy in life for a quick one, okay? We say number one is health. Agree? I, I don't think anyone disagree. And number two is family. Whatever you call family. La. Husband, wife, mother, father, children. We family. La. Big group. Then the third is money. La. Okay? Fair? Okay? Health, work, health come first. Family come second. Money come third. Money come third. Agree? So far? I mean, I, I don't talk about religion and all that. We just stick to these three first. But we agree. Huh? Cannot be family more important than health. Because you have no health, you are a burden to the family. I don't know what you're doing for your family, but you're just burdening. So health is always number one. Family comes two, money comes three. No money, got family, also happiness, I tell you first. Three things. Let me ask you an honest question. We all have 24 hours every day, right? We wake up every day, what's the first thing you do? You look at your mobile phone, man. You pick up the phone, you check your SMS, you look at your Facebook, you look at your email. That's the first thing you do. Then the second thing you do is, okay lah, don't talk about the pang sai pang jiu sui chi ki lah. That one is, ah. The next thing you do, eat breakfast, lim kopi, go to office. Then you tell yourself, later tonight, I think I can go exercise. Then come to 6 o'clock, work haven't finished yet. Yeah, tomorrow lah, tomorrow lah. Then rush home for dinner with family. You look at your priority. I thought that priority. Your first priority is money, you know? First priority is money. And your last priority is health. But you know your value system is number one is health. Money is last. But yet you prioritize the last. You're all funny people, no? Tombale one, right? And it's not something you don't know, you know? So, I tell people this, hold on, what I was leading up to for the whole Singapore story is this. The only day, the only day, most of everyone in this room will align, align their priority to their value system. The only day is when you fall sick. Okay? The day you fall sick, your lokun tell you, ma'am, you got cancer. Then suddenly the money doesn't matter. Huh? Suddenly your health really become number one. Huh? I tell people this, the day we will realize what we need to change, unfortunately, is the day tragedy will hit you. Okay? So here's my challenge to you. Must you wait for tragedy to change? Or can you do something about your change now? Do you need to Singapore to jala jala la? I use the word jala jala first la. Do you need Singapore to jala jala then become one people, one nation, one Singapore? Is that what you need? Jala jala first. So think about it la, huh? So for me, I put my health first la. I was not always like that, but I am like that. And I hope you all do the same. La. Your health comes first, family second, then money is a third. La. No, money is not important. It's a function of the world. That's all. It's not an important thing, but it's a functional thing. In the old days, it's barter trade. You clean my shoe, I let you eat my rice. But not everybody wants the shoe clean. And nobody want, everybody wants to eat rice. So they find something more common called money. So I clean your shoe for $10, I buy your rice for $8, that's all. It's a mode of transaction. Yeah, that, that's all. It's, it's a transactional medium, that's all. Yeah, uh, hi, uh, Mr. Ong. Thanks for sharing with us your philosophy on life. Uh, I've got two questions. It's sure. related to your profession. I hope you don't mind. Please. Uh, so the first one is... Um, I don't know, I always have this, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, I'm, I'm not a professional architect, so sure. I'm in the, I don't know, I always feel we got this obsession with Ammo architect, uh, like what Zaha Hadid and uh, all the Mozi Safdi. Uh, so do we still have this obsession going forward? And, um, You're in trouble, right? Will, will we, will, will, will we uh, create a Singapore superstar like your IMP? I, I, I do not know, maybe you are one, but... Um, no. and, and the second question is... I am one. I'm oh, yeah, okay, I'm kidding. kidding. The, the second question is, um, uh, your 360 design thing, I, I think it's very unique, but uh, it's not... 
I know there are many big companies out there that are doing this, they promise the same value proposition, they are more endowed. So how, how do you differentiate yourself from the ACOMs or the um, big boys? Yeah, I, I, thanks. Okay. Uh, I, I want to I do two things. I address the second one first, this is the easy one. Actually, the 360 or not 360 is just a solution, to be honest. The distinction point in the future for everything that we do in this room, and that's our tagline for the year in our company, is called the gifting of ideas. You see, you are my customer. You come to me and say, you want to do this, you want to do this, you want to do that, da, 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 right? If I can rationalize and show you the reason and ideas behind what you're trying to do, and I can give that idea to you as a gift, that idea you adopt. We're doing the TWAS, uh, the new TWAS port. So we are planning the new TWAS port, the finger piers, they call them the finger piers. So when we looked at the finger pier, we told the CEO, I said, hey, this is a missed opportunity. We can convert this and make this into a public park, we can do this and do that, yeah? But in that conversation, what effectively what we're doing is we're giving ideas to the CEO, yes? And when the CEO likes the idea, he receives a gift. Now, it's very hard to give people ideas, because no? everyone's very smart. So you've got to be a little bit sharper than the smart to see beyond the obvious, to give the idea. Once someone adopts the idea, they become their idea. Once it becomes their idea, sets you apart from everybody else. Okay? Because the design is a design. Like, you like green, I like blue. Lah. You got 360, I also got 360 at some point. So the sort of strategic planning thinking and all that will come into play, the think tank, and then you give that idea. And your first question was Ang Mos, right? I don't, think it's a, it's, I don't think it's a race issue. It's just that we are a very young nation. Yeah? So take America, for example. Just use the US, for example. 50 states. But one state, God, you know how many cities you not? California is one state, right? There are 50 states. The first state is Texas, and the last state is Hawaii. That's why it's called Hawaii 5 okay? There are 50 states in the US. But California alone, alone, has 17 major cities. Singapore is just one. Then Jalat. <laughs> so you have LA, you have San Diego, you have Sacramento, you have, you have tons. You have Davis, California, you have Irvine, California. Just California alone. Then they have airports everywhere, agree? So if you're an architect in the US, you do airport, huh? enough already, you know. And you don't do it one time, you know. You can do this, I don't know how many times, you know. Because it's domestic airport, private airport, international airport. Military airport times how many city airport times how many state airport? You just go in times and see, you know, 300, 400 airport in one US. Singapore, one airport, lah, brother. So when you take public money, your money, citizens' money to build airport, if I'm the government, I must be responsible for your money, right? If I spend, I better make, you make sure it's well spent and it's a damn good airport, agree? Then they turn to Singaporeans and say, how many airports have you done? Then you go, uh, I do primary school. So it's not that we like the Ang Mos or don't like the Ang Mos. I don't think it's a, gen, a, a race issue. But they bring to the table 300 years of nation building. What we want to do is to be learning from it. That's all. So it's not a bad thing. Yeah? But I, 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 I hear what you're saying. Over time, once we learn enough, I give you an example. I think in the old days, we would bring a lot for even building high-rise buildings. Today, don't need. High-rise building, I think we all can do here as well. So not a problem. In the old days, we get Japanese contractors. You like the Ang Mo? That's, wait, what, what do you mean? <laughs> okay. Okay, guys. Yes. Okay, we're just going to take one last question from this side. From this side. Because I see, okay. Yes. So I don't have to do the last part, huh? Yeah. Uh, hi, Zubun. Yeah, I noticed uh, that you told us that you're also a professional student. Yes. And uh, during the period, uh, 2002 to 05, I, I believe you went to a lot of uh, a courses. Lot. Yeah. How do you actually manage your firm while you're overseas? Okay. 
I chose a lot of courses, but I chose only the necessary courses. So, for example, some people would do quit work and do one year of MBA, correct? I'm sure you might have known some friends. I refuse to because I know when you study MBA, you study finance, you study accounting, you study international business, you study marketing, you, study, you know, all the business things. Then you can get MBA, ma. Right? Now, I know I'm an architect. And all I really wanted to understand was finance. Because in my world, marketing is my project. Oh. You want to know whether I'm good or not, you just come and look at the building and say, that one mine, oh. that's marketing. Right? And it's a real deal. Oh. It's not a, it's a real deal. So what I wanted to learn was only one thing. I was very targeted with what I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn finance and account because I want to read my annual report and I want to know what the accountant is talking about, no? I don't want to be lied to, I don't want to be cheated. I'm not saying pe people do it deliberate, but sometimes they try to explain something simple to you. And I can tell you accounting is not so simple. How many accountants in this room? I don't know. Is it? It's not so simple. To decide whether you capitalize an expense or expense an expense is a very thin line. And I can assure you most people in the room don't know what I just said. But all the accountants understand what I said. And my problem is, I'm an architect trying to run a business. So, I had to go and learn. So, I was very targeted. But it's not one year course. It's like the six week course, eight week course. Because I'm not taking all the 20 modules to get MBA. I just want to take one module called finance. Only. It's like, if in English, I think you call it executive master's program. So, that's what I did. I did a very targeted executive program in, in real estate, executive program in finance. And that's all I did. And I, in our office, all our directors are sent to the executive finance program. Some, after they go, come back, they say, Boon, really, num numbers is not for me. You know, they do. Not everybody likes numbers. So you can send them to as many courses. I send you for piano course. Doesn't mean you come out suddenly and play Liberace. Cannot be, right? But at least I send you for course, lah. But some people just have it switched on, left brain, right brain, right brain, left brain. Some people have, some people don't. There's no right, there's no wrong, there's no good, there's no bad. But as a company, we make time and we invest and we send. We try lor, bo pian lor. Right? It's like parents take their children to art class, take children to piano class. We take lor, what to do? Must invest. Lah. We don't know the outcome, but we invest. That's it? Yep. Yes. Okay, we'll take one last question, all right? Wow, Jalat. Hi, I'm uh, interested in what you just said, uh, yeah. Boon, about yeah. um, sao, zuan sao, and then uh, zuan sao, jiu fen sao. Okay, mm. I can understand if it's, let's say, if you make money, right? You just, uh, maybe you can explain to us how you, how you implement that, uh, you know, that idea in your firm. So, let me, let me explain. Com the word's called compensation. When someone works hard for you, and you don't share in the, in the reapings. Nobody wants to work hard for you. That's why I say, Zuo duo sao, zuan duo sao, fen duo sao. The magic word, last part is the fen. Wo zuo duo sao, zuan duo sao, danzhen wo mei fen. Correct? You see, the last part. The question is a psychology of at what point is you fen duo sao is enough. Wu hua bo hua. So it's a math. It all depends on how much you can fun. I'm not saying that you must fun until it's crazy. Like you say, 老板,你是 property developer. 你卖完了是几百个万呢。跟我分多少? Cannot be 80% or 50-50%. Uh. So uh, the question is the quantum merit. Because it works back relative to what he's earning. So if he's a $10,000 man, he makes $120,000 a year. If you can tell him he will make double that, that means he gets 12 months bonus. 12 months bonus, not one month, two months bonus, 12 months bonus. He's very happy. Then you've got to work backwards to take a look at what is the merit of your business. What kind of profit margin does your business get? Then you can work it backwards and say, hey, I, if you work normal hard, huh, you can make roughly about eight months bonus. That's one way. But there's a mathematics, so it's because we all have only 24 hours of our lives. That's all we have. So no matter how hard we work, we can hit until a point and then that's it. 
So the question is, what you want to fund to make it relative to what he takes as a salary interesting. Then it activates a person and say, well, I, get so. well, I want a good luck, so I want to earn more. Right? If it just gives him one day extra bonus, nobody wants to do it. They just say, give me my salary. But if he can make that difference with salary component, he will fly. Then he's hungry. I'm not saying I want to make people look like animal. What I'm saying is we need to respect people for their contribution. Luzo, watcha. Don't have one. Ah. This world don't exist. We have all learned to earn a living. But don't forget to make a life. And as you add the years to your life, please add the life to your years. Okay? So good night. Have a good Thank one. Thank you. Can I invite uh, Wayin to give a very small token to you? Good. All right, thank you very much. Hey, good night, go home. <laughs>